Good evening. We'll call to order the regular meeting of the Mayor and Board of Trustees of the Village of Woodridge and request Clerk Neistrom to please call the roll. Trustee Kagan. Present. Trustee Abbott. Present. Trustee Pittenger. Present. Trustee Banks. Present. Trustee Beavers. Present. Trustee Cunningham. Present. Mayor Murphy. Present. Quorum is established. Please stand for a moment of silence and remain standing for a moment of silence or the Pledge of Allegiance led by our employee of the quarter and soon to be retired, Kathy Seuss. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And under special awards and presentations, uh, we're delighted to have a resolution honoring Kathy Sues this evening. And the chair would recognize uh, Trustee Beavers for a reading in full of resolution R62-2011. Okay. Whereas the village has an employee recognition program, and whereas the employee of the quarter program is an important part of an overall effort to provide incentives for superior employee performance. And whereas an employee of the quarter has been selected by the Employee Advisory Committee on July 26, 2011, and now therefore be it resolved by the Mayor and the Board of Trustees of the Village of Woodridge as follows. Katie Sues is hereby publicly commended for being selected by the Employee Advisory Committee for the third quarter of 2011 and the Mayor and the Board of Trustees congratulate Katie Sues for this recognition by her employee peers and encourage all village employees to maintain a high level of performance. And in recognition of Katie Sues being selected, the village administrator is authorized to grant the employee of the quarter eight hours of personal time off. Those aforesaid mentioned eight hours of personal time must be used in an eight hour block and must be taken within 12 months from the effective date of this resolution. Okay, motion's been made to approve resolution. R62-2011 is there a second? Yes. Motion made and seconded by Trustee Cunningham Pizzik. No questions or discussion, hearing none. Clerk Neistrom, please call the roll. Trustee Abbott. Aye. Trustee Pittenger. Aye. Trustee Banks? Aye. Trustee Beavers? Aye. Trustee Cunningham? Aye. Trustee Kagan? Aye. Motion is approved. Well, and we're delighted to have Kathy with us this evening and uh, Deborah Fleischlag, the Finance Director. Please share with us uh, some additional information about Kathy. I also want to bring up Linda Dalton, who actually nominated Kathy for Employee of the Quarter and had many, many nice things to say, um, which isn't surprising. Kathy's been with us 11 years, has shown unbelievable professionalism and customer service to our residents, and we will be sad to see her go, and after her 11 years, she will be retiring on September 2nd. But I would like Linda to say a few words regarding her recognition? Well, like uh, Deb said, that uh, Kathy's been with us for 11 years. Uh, she's been up at the front. She handles uh, very stressful moments. We have irate customers that come in sometimes, and Kathy is very professional, uh, always is there to calm them and make the best situation out of everything. She has great flexibility. She has always been there for the finance department. Uh, on the moment's notice, when we need her, we give her a call and she comes in. Uh, she just really helps the department out in so many areas. Her, her patience, uh, I can't say enough wonderful things about Kathy. Uh, she just sets a great example for the village, for the department, and everybody she comes in contact with. And Kathy, on behalf of the citizens of our community and my fellow elected officials, we want to congratulate you not only as being recognized as an employee of the quarter, and there's no more meaningful recognition than recognition from those that you work uh, with, but also obviously on your upcoming retirement. One more week to go, 
and uh, and you're gonna have to fit in a, a day off sometime between now and then, which I. Uh, <laughs> we'll be in tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and we are having a little celebration uh, next Thursday at Super Rosa following work. So if anybody would like to come, you're more than welcome to join us. We'll have some pizza and cake and coffee at the office on Thursday at 3 o'clock. So please join us. We also want to recognize Jack, her husband, who has been very flexible, too. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Kathy. Thanks to Linda and Deb that I have to say I'm finishing my career having worked with the best people I've ever met in my life. And you're all so fortunate that you have these people representing you. Thank you again, Deb, Linda. <laughs> And we're also very honored this evening to have an opportunity to recognize a long employee, long time employee, uh, Gina Grady. And Gina, uh, Deputy Chief Grady, if you could proceed to the podium and I would invite Chief Heron to join us. Thank you, Mayor. Kathy, you, you're absolutely right. One of the best people that you could ever work for is right here. So uh, <laughs> we, we, we totally understand. Uh, Mayor and Board, I'd like to take an opportunity to uh, introduce Gina. For those that don't know Gina, I think everybody does, uh, but for those that don't, uh, Gina started with us 25 years ago on July 6, 1986, as she would refer to it all the time. Uh, it's not 1986, it's always 1986. Gina is, okay. Gina is currently assigned as the Deputy Chief of the Support Services Division. Um, what does that do? It does a lot. Probably a lot more today than it did a few weeks ago, as we'll talk about. Currently, the, this uh, deputy chief's position oversees the detective unit, our records unit, the resource center, special project sergeant. Uh, between the time that Janine Chapano, our communication supervisor, was gone, and we transferred all of our dispatch out of the building, Gina was the communication supervisor. That's the other part that she did. Um, she's also working on our online ticketing. Uh, we're, we're preparing to work or comparing to complete some of our online ticketing programs, online parking tickets and online traffic tickets, and we're hoping to have that done very soon. We're working uh, on just some of the final, uh, final pieces of that right now. She's also responsible for the 800 megahertz radio system, which typically is not a big deal. Um, unfortunately, in the months of June and July, we've been hit with the worst storms I think we've ever been hit with. Uh, with electric outages, with electric spikes and phone spikes, and it has gone from not that big of a deal to, oh my gosh, a big deal, daily a daily occurrence. Unfortunately, the system went down again today. Uh, but again, that's something that Gina is responsible for and uh, is, is literally getting this fixed little by little by little, and uh, within the short period of time, it's going to be not a big deal again. During Gina's career, she served in a lot of, she's done a lot of things for us. In uh, 1990, she was a special agent with an undercover agent with DuMed, the DuPage Metropolitan Drug Enforcement Group. Uh, she's been a juvenile, certified juvenile officer for us. She became sergeant in uh, February 1990, 1998. Uh, she supervised our bike patrol unit. We kind of changed the way we were doing bike patrol from kind of an ad hoc to pretty formalized process. She was a detective sergeant from December of 04 until she was promoted to deputy chief. And of course, she also served as the deputy chief of the patrol division. So she took care of all the men and women back there in, in blue. In Gina's file, as you would expect, she has a lot of letters, commendations, and recognition uh, in there for her. In 1993, a couple of things to, to let you know, but in 1993, Gina received the Award of Valor from the Woodridge Police Department and from the International Narcotics Officers Association for a shooting that she was involved in while she was an undercover agent at DUMEG. She also has received in 1993 the Enrique Camarica Award from School District 68 for her work that she did in drug enforcement. Gina is described, uh, and I was, it, I was only able to pick up about five things out because the list would have been about four pages, but <laughs> someone who's a very dependable person, someone who's a very good communicator, She's very detail oriented. She's a good project manager, which is obviously demonstrated by everything she does day to day. She's a people person. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Deputy Chief Grady holds an associate's degree in applied sciences from Morton College 
and a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Western Illinois University. Uh, Gina lives with not only her husband Jim, who is here, but her two children, Christine and Maureen, or Christine and Mo, I believe. Thanks for coming out. And Mayor, that's a little bit about Gina, uh, without taking another half hour. <laughs> and Deputy Chief Brady, uh, we want to congratulate you on your 25 years of service and what you have done for the department. Uh, part of the reason why we are, have one of the finest departments in the suburban area is because of the leadership at all levels, but particularly individuals such as you, who through the years have served as a mentor and a leader for the others in the department. So we congratulate you and we wish you many more years of success in the Village of Woodridge. Please accept this as a small memento of that recognition. And while the Chief has introduced your family, I'd also like you to introduce them. Families of those that work in government, particularly law enforcement, have to be extremely supportive. And your family, I know, has been extremely supportive. So please personally introduce them for us. Um, I'd like to introduce my husband, Jim. We've been married for 20 years, October 6th. Um, Maureen, who is 12 years old and goes to Kennedy Junior High. And then Christine, who is 15 and goes to Bennett in uh, Lyle. Well, Jesus congratulations office. to you three of Thank you for that. And to you. We then turn to questions from the public. We have no formal public hearing this evening, but there are two opportunities for residents and guests to address the board. The first would be an opportunity to ask questions and make comments on matters that are not on the agenda, and following that, matters that are related to the agenda. So first, if there are residents or guests that would like to address the board on matters that are not on the agenda, please proceed to the podium and state your name and address for purposes of the record. Observing no one, we would also then invite residents and guests who have questions or comments on any of the agenda items that are on the agenda this evening. Observing no one, we thank you for being with us this evening. We then proceed to the omnibus vote, and the board has for their consideration this evening approval of omnibus vote items A through G and acceptance of H and J, and the chair would entertain a motion to approve the omnibus vote as stated. So moved. Motion by Trustee Abbott, second by Trustee Banks. Mayor, we'll hold out item F. I'd like to talk about that separately. Okay, item F is separate consideration. Are there any other requests for separate consideration? Okay, prior to uh, deliberation and voting on that, I would ask Administrator Rush to re please review those matters. Certainly. The first item for your consideration is ordinance number 2011-37. Uh, granting a minor amendment to the final plan and plat of the planned unit development for Willow Creek Elementary School, 2901 Jackson Drive. Woodridge School District 68 has applied for a minor amendment to a final plan and, and plat of planned unit development for Willow Creek Elementary School to facilitate the replacement of their existing parking lot and some sidewalk areas with permeable pavers. The permeable pavers are a more environmentally friendly and cost-effective material than the existing concrete and asphalt surfaces. Under the streamlined development review process, this request requires uh, only staff approval. Staff did grant that approval for the minor PUD amendment on June 28, 2011. Item B is a motion to approve a waiver of zoning fees, the Woodridge School District, number 68. Um, again, this relates to the item above. And in the past, the village has waived the zoning application and engineering review and inspection fees for local government agencies. Item C is Ordinance 2011-38, granting a minor amendment to the final plan and plat of the planned unit development for Sipley Elementary School, 2803 83rd Street. Again, similar to Willow Creek, the school has um, replacement of their existing sidewalk and plaza areas with permeable pavers and staff granted minor uh, approval of the minor PUD amendment on June 28th. Item D is a motion to approve the waiver of zoning fees related to the Sipley Elementary School paving improvements. Item E is ordinance number 2011-39, granting a minor amendment to the final plan and plat of a planned unit development for Center Point Shopping Center portions of phase one, two, phase 2A, 2B, and phase 3A. 7200 Woodward Avenue, Home Depot, USA, Inc. Home Depot 
has applied for a minor amendment to a final plan and plat of planned unit development to relocate their propane tanks and install an automatic vending machine that would dispense full propane tanks. Under the new streamlined development review process, this request only requires staff approval and staff granted approval of the minor PUD amendment on April 26, 2011. Item G is ordinance number 2011-41, authorizing the disposal of personal property owned by the village of Woodridge, Illinois. The police department periodically disposes of property that has not been claimed after a period of six months. This ordinance declares those items surplus and provides for their disposal via auction. And as you stated before, item H and I are minutes and item J is accounts payable. Uh, thank you, Administrator Rush. And, uh as you know, we are going to be voting on on this vote item with the exception of item F. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Clerk Nystrom, please call the roll. Trustee Pittenger. Aye. Trustee Banks. Aye. Trustee Beavers. Aye. Trustee Cunningham. Aye. Trustee Kagan. Aye. Trustee Abbott. Aye. Motion is approved. We then have consideration of Ordinance 201140, and the Chair entertains a motion to adopt Ordinance 201140. Motion by Trustee Pittenger, second by Trustee Cunningham Pizzik to approve Ordinance 201140. Questions and discussion? Trustee Kagan. Um, I believe I'll direct this question towards Eric. Eric, in uh, relation to this, uh, we talk about kennels providing activities occur in a completely enclosed building. Is the definition kennels the doggy dormitories? What about an exterior dog run? What, what are, what's the intent and scope of this? The intent is to keep it completely within the building. Um, I don't believe that uh, they're looking at an external dog run at all. Um, uh, it would be all done within the warehouse portion. You know, the, they would have an area within the warehouse area that they could uh, exercise and run within the building. Are, are we crafting this change in the ordinance just for the exit, this a new business coming in? Are we, you know, as I said, the expectation is if you had an animal hospital that had an exterior, you know, a dog run, would that then fall into the same classification as kenneling of an animal? I don't believe so. Um, the, uh, uh, if, I, if I could, in the definition, it excludes from the definition, uh, excluding, uh, which does not include the provision of medical care. Okay. I'm sorry. I couldn't. We couldn't hear you on this end. I didn't hear. Yeah. Oh, uh, trust, Trustee Kagan's question was, what about uh, uh, veterinary facilities? And uh, I pointed out that in the definition of kennel, it ex it excludes locations where medical care is provided. Thank you. Okay, additional questions Thank or you, discussion? Okay. Hearing none, uh, Clark Nystrom, please call the roll. Trustee Kagan. Aye. Trustee Abbott. Aye. Trustee Pittenger. Aye. Trustee Banks. Aye. Trustee Beavers. Aye. Trustee Cunningham. Aye. Motion is approved. <coughs> we have no communication or correspondence this evening under my report. Uh, two items. Uh, one, uh, congratulations to the uh, uh, volunteers and, and leaders in the 12th annual uh, mini triathlon uh, that is sponsored by the uh, Rotary, and uh, I believe we had uh, two Rotary members, Administrator Rush and Board Member Cunningham Pizzik, that were very involved in that. So, congratulations! And I know some other staff members also were probably involved. Uh, another very successful event, which raises money for many of the very worthy projects that uh, the Rotary funds during the course of a year, but also the largest mini triathlon in the Chicago metropolitan area. So it brings a lot of people to Woodridge that otherwise would not be here. And also congratulations to the staff on the uh, latest Woodridge Topic Forum, uh, Building a Healthy Business Community, that was held on Tuesday of this week. Uh, another successful uh, topic forum and also particularly appreciation to uh, Mayor Pro Tem Beavers who represented uh, the Mayor's office and also Trustee Cunningham Pizzik and Trustee Bank and uh, Clark Neistrom were also present. So thank you for your participation. And uh, perhaps uh, Administrator Rush, you could share with us when the next uh, forum is going to be held. The next forum is going to be held on September 13th. Um, and it'll be located at the library. 
um, this time versus over at Jefferson. Um, it will feature um, Chris Bethel, the Director of Public Works. Um, he'll be highlighting uh, infrastructure um, as the primary topic. So that's streets and water. Thank you. Is there any additional administrator's report? Um, just a shameless plug for the next uh, Rotary uh, event, uh, which will occur, occur on Sunday, September 11th. Um, it's Experiencing Ravinia in Woodridge, and uh, we're going to have local uh, musician Brother John and his band play, and tickets are available um, through Trustee Cunningham Pisick. Thank you very much. We have no active agenda items. Do any board members have unfinished or new business? Hearing none, the chair entertains a motion to adjourn. <coughs> motion by Trustee Kagan, second by Trustee Pittenger to adjourn. All in favor indicate by the sign aye. 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 Motion is approved. We are adjourned.